Pentecost blessings to all of you. I invite you to lay the things in your hands down on the bench beside you to, or put them in the pew rack, sit back in your seat, relax your shoulders. And if you feel safe to do so, you may close your eyes. And I take a deep, deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. Breathe in again, breathing in the breath of life from the Holy Spirit. And as you release that breath, let go of the worries and the troubles and the burdens that you've been carrying. Let Jesus carry them for you. Breathe in again that breath of life and let it fill your soul and your mind and your heart. And as you release it, let go of the things that clutter your mind, the things that need to be done, the things you forgot to do. Spend this time together with Jesus as we listen to our prelude in preparation for our worship. Where we start. O oh, Spirit of God, you moved over the waters at creation. Move now in our hearts. O oh, Spirit of God, you breathed life into the dry bones. Breathe new life into us. O oh, Spirit of God, you animated the witness of the prophets. Animate our witness to the world. O oh, Spirit of God, you descended upon Jesus as he prayed at his baptism. Descend on you on us, we pray. O Spirit of God, you led Jesus into the wilderness. Lead us in the wild and desolate places of our lives. O Spirit of God, you anointed Jesus to proclaim good news, release to the captives, and freedom to the oppressed. Anoint us as we work for justice for all your people. O oh, Spirit of God, you came to your church in fire and wind. Kindle our hearts with the fire of your truth and love. O oh, Spirit of God, you led your church out to new people and new places. Lead us out of our complacency to the new things you are doing. O oh, Spirit of God, you are our advocate and our comforter. Come upon us now. 
Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. O Spirit of God, without you we are lost. Guide us in this new day. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. O Spirit of God, without you we are powerless. Give us the power to do your will. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. O Spirit of God, you move without ceasing. Make us restless to follow you. Amen and amen and amen.
let us pray. Mighty God, you breathe life into our bones, and your spirit brings truth to the world. Send us this spirit. Transform us by your truth, and give us language to proclaim your gospel through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The first century Jews, Pentecost Shavuot was, like Passover, one of the three annual festivals for which everyone who could, who could went to Jerusalem. Given the rhythms of agricultural life, it was the most possible for most people. Just as Passover commemorated the escape from Egypt, Shavuot commemorated the giving of the law on Sinai 50 days later. Wind and flame accompanied the presence of God on that mountain. A reading from Acts 2, verses 1 to 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now, there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own language we hear them speaking about God's deeds and power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy and I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
his final address to his followers, Jesus promises to send the advocate. In many translations, the Greek word paraclete is used. This marks the Holy Spirit as an advocate for us, a defense attorney, if you will, but one who is also a trustworthy witness and a companion, as the word paraclete literally means one called to stand beside. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 15th and 16th chapters. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me since the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me. Yet none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment, about sin because they do not believe in me, about righteousness because I am going to the Father and you will see me no longer, about judgment because the ruler of this world has been condemned. Oh, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. I would like to invite our young people to come forward for some time together. So I'm, I'm going to stand up. I don't want to sit down. <coughs> you? Yeah. Okay. So one of the stories that we typically hear on Pentecost Sunday, and you might have heard it a little bit in the liturgy about the dry bones and bringing these bones back to life, is a story from Ezekiel. And it's a story that, that, that is a vision that the prophet Ezekiel had while the Israelites were in exile in Babylon. And the, the Israelites had lost hope. They lost everything. They lost their families, their homes, their identity as a people. They lost everything. And Ezekiel's vision was that he's looking out. God takes him, he's looking out, and he sees this whole valley full of all of these dry, dead bones. And God asks him, can these bones live? And Ezekiel says, well, only you know, Lord. And so the Lord tells Ezekiel to prophesy to the bones so that ligaments and sinews and flesh and muscle and all these things that come on these bones. So Ezekiel does it. And all of a sudden, the bones are rattling and they're coming together and flesh is going on them and they, like, turn into people. But there is no life in them. So the Lord tells Ezekiel, call the Spirit. And the Spirit comes and breathes life into all of those bones that are now covered with flesh. And the people came alive again. And the, 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 
the point of that story and that vision is that sometimes in our lives, things seem hopeless, right? Sometimes we feel like we've just got to give up, right? But the Holy Spirit comes as we are celebrating the coming of the Holy Spirit today on Pentecost and fills us with new life. So that when we are going about our day or our, our lives and things seem hopeless, we call on the Spirit to fill us with life. That's why when we do our, our meditation at the beginning of worship, I say, breathe in the breath of life from the Holy Spirit. So that we breathe that life in and we are renewed and refreshed. Now, I tell that story because we did not read it today to everybody, but also because through this school year, the two of you and Nora have been coming to faith formation class or Sunday school confirmation in your case. And Evan, you've done a really great job in your attendance at Sunday school. And um, what has been the best thing about Sunday school this year for you? The snacks. The snacks? <laughs> I thought you were going to say learning how to, to work the technology equipment. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good too. So Evan has been learning under the tutelage of Randy and um, Charlie how to do the live stream and work the technology for our ability to live stream our services. So we give you a big hand for that. And a big thank you to Charlie and Randy. And here is a gift card for your, your almost perfect attendance. Yay. Okay. <laughs> now, Alyssa. You and Nora have been great students through your first year of confirmation. What do you think has been the best part about it? Just like learning more about God. <laughs> <laughs> and the teacher too. Oh, the teacher. <laughs> yeah, learning more about God. You guys have done an amazing job. And we're getting ready to go to um, All Saints Confirmation Camp at Camp Nawakwa. Uh, Nora and Alyssa and myself. And so I ask your prayers for us as we prepare our hearts and minds to go to that important camp. The topic of the week is one that's just a little light topic about love and hate. So it should be very interesting. So um, keep us in prayer. And Alyssa, thank you for your faithfulness in your studies. And um, I look forward to continuing our catechetical studies next fall. Okay, thanks, guys. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the ability and the opportunities to learn more about you. Not only for our youth, but also for all of the adults here at Zion. The opportunities to learn and to grow in our faith with you is endless and boundless. And we give you thanks. Send your Holy Spirit to inspire us to seek and to know. Amen. Okay, thanks. I don't want to hit that thing. So today is all about the movement and the work of the Holy Spirit. That's what Pentecost is. The story of how the advocate that Jesus promised would come to the apostles to give them the power to testify to all that Jesus does for us. The advocate is the Holy Spirit, whom we receive in our baptism. Now, the power and nature of the Holy Spirit confounds us sometimes, surprises us at times, and totally knocks our socks off more often than we care to admit. Too often, when we hear the stories recorded in the Bible, we we can't imagine them happening in our modern 2024 world. I mean, let's look at the story of the Pentecost. We just heard from Acts, for example. The sound of violent wind from heaven, tongues of fire resting on our heads. You're safe. Understanding the gospel of Jesus in our own language as the voices of other languages surround us in a cacophony 
of sound? Huh, let's get real here. Things like that don't happen in 2024. But then again, are we so sure about that? Every time that we come together in this worship place, as the people come together in that room nearly 2,000 years ago, Pentecost happens. Settle down, there are no tongues of fire dancing on your heads that I can see right now. I haven't heard the sound of a violent wind yet. I haven't heard anyone speaking in a foreign language here that I was able to suddenly understand. And still, Pentecost happens. The Holy Spirit shows up. The Holy Spirit fills us. The Holy Spirit gives us the ability to understand. You see, we're not so very different than the people who gathered in that upper room nearly 2,000 years ago. We come, as they did, to gather strength and comfort from our community of believers. We come and gather in anticipation of Jesus' presence with us. All of us come from different places. And by that, I don't necessarily mean different geographical places, because how many of you were born and raised right here in East Petersburg? Raise your hand. Several of you. How many have come from another place, that this is your adopted home? Lots of us. So I don't mean geographical places. I mean that each of us comes from a different perspective, a different idea of who the Holy Trinity is, who the three-in-one is, and how we worship Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We each speak a language about our faith that comes from the influence and teachings of our childhood and the church we may have grown up in. How many of you grew up as Lutherans? And how many of you grew up in a different faith? I grew up in a different faith too. So all of us bring with us this language and vocabulary and perspective of worship and God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit that is all different. In our congregations, we have folks who have a brethren background, Roman Catholic, Presbyterian, Mennonite, Methodist, Baptist, Lutheran, and maybe even others that I'm not aware of. The language and practices of piety or that's a fancy word for how we practice our religion, religious beliefs, and the traditions that we've grown up with, and the order of worship that we learned are all different. But every time we come together to worship and praise our creator, our redeemer, and our sustainer, the Holy Spirit fills us so that we hear and understand the same language. All of our differences continue, but in the moments of hearing the sound of our music and our voices joined together in song and in pray, the praying of the liturgy and in the prayers that we pray together, we are speaking the same language. The Spirit moves among us, filling us with the fire that warms us with God's love and mercy, and the fire that sheds the light of Christ that shows us the way and gives us hope. We may not always agree how worship should be. We just don't, and we won't. Stand up, sit down, sing, not sing, Join in the chorus as we orally pray the liturgy, keep silent, come to the table when communion is offered or not. 
but the first words and notes that signal that our worship is beginning herald the power and mystery of Pentecost. Just as the sound from heaven of a rush of wind filled the place where the apostles gathered. The coming of the Holy Spirit who breathes life into us. The coming of the one who gives us his body and blood for the forgiveness of sin. The coming of the God who created each of us in God's own image. The coming together of God's beloved church along with all the heavenly host and all the saints in a beautiful view of the kingdom of God on earth, right here, right now. And in that moment, each of our perceptions of how to worship, each of our opinions of what should and should not be, and any opinions we have about anything concerning with worship no longer matter. The only thing that matters is that God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit surround us, enter into us, move over, under, and through us in a holy dance of grace, mercy, love, and forgiveness filling our bodies and souls with hope and forgiveness and strength. Pentecost happens in that moment every time. And if that's not enough, <laughs> Jesus sends us, the Spirit sends us into the world to practice resurrection through the telling of stories of our Pentecost experience, our stories of Jesus' forgiveness through his death and resurrection and ascension, to tell our stories of God's unconditional love and mercy, our stories of the Holy Spirit's movement in our lives. And we can do that because Jesus assures us that we are not alone. He sends the Holy Spirit, the paraclete, the advocate to help us. Filled with the Spirit, we take that tongue of fire with us. We take the sound of the wind from heaven with us. We take the forgiveness of sin we received in the bread and the wine with us. We carry Pentecost with us to share and to tell and to live. May it be so. Amen. It struck me that maybe I should say something about our hymn of the day, uh, primarily because it's one you might not know. But the reason that I chose this hymn is because of some ideas that I heard in the sermon. You know, when you walk into a church on Sunday, you uh, hopefully expect to hear something totally different than you hear during the week. So this, um, in, in, in word and music, so this hymn tune, comes from the French Catholic Church back in the late 1700s. And so as we sing this, I want you to imagine that you're walking into a cavernous cathedral and from the balcony you hear this slowly unfolding chant-like tune. Now the words are a translation, so they won't do the same thing that the Latin probably did for the people who were hearing it. But um, if you have that expansive feeling of a heavenly choir in your mind as this tune unfolds, I think you'll get the idea of why I chose to uh, have you suffer through this brand new hymn. <laughs> <laughs> so let, let's see it. Let's see how it goes.
Let us confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. We pray for the church universal, for its ministries, and for the spread of the gospel. God of grace, for the earth, our precious home, Empower us by your spirit to be wise and faithful stewards of all you have made. God of grace, for the nations and those who govern, give those in authority understanding hearts that they work together to bring justice and peace on earth, especially in countries torn by war and the threat of war. God of grace, for all who are in need around the world and for all who suffer in any way especially Alex and Jess Linda Joe and Joan Jared Pat Doug Jenny Greg Addison, Chris, Pat, Betty, Bob and Betty, Amy, Melissa, Lori, DJ, Pat and Jeff, Linda, Linda, Harlan, Margaret, Lee, Barbara and Greg, Eleanor, and those whom we name aloud and in our hearts. Touch them with your healing hands, God of grace. For this congregation and its ministries, that we hear your will to do the work you ask us to do. May our efforts be pleasing in your sight, and may your church be a place of welcome for all people. God of grace. We remember the faithful departed and ask you to send comfort to those who are grieving especially the Chappelle and the Hoover families. Give us thankful hearts for those who have gone before us in the faith, especially Marianne Chappelle and Albert Hoover. At the last day, breathe new life into our dry bones that we might feast forever with all the saints in light. God of grace. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. Amen.
May the peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Please take a moment to share the peace with your neighbor.
you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that you offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Fulfilling the promise of the resurrection, you pour out the fire of your spirit, uniting in one body people of every nation and tongue. <coughs> and so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <coughs> Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life-giving death and glorious resurrection, we await your promised life for all this dying world. Breathe your spirit on us and on this bread and cup. Carry us in your arms from death to life, that we may live as your chosen ones, clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ is made known to us in the breaking of the bread. Come and eat at God's table.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Amen. Um, just a brief announcement that I should have said at the beginning but forgot. Um, tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock, the Hoover family will receive visitors and condolences and the funeral for Butch Hoover begins at 11 followed by a luncheon in the fellowship hall. So I wanted to give you a reminder about that. And speaking of fellowship hall, I hope to see you all downstairs. Mangia, mangia, let's eat and have a good time. And hear these words of blessing. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and always. Amen. Amen. peace. Rejoice and be glad. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.